When you go looking through your memories, what do you see? Do you find only the bright, shiny experiences right in front of you, or do you ever stop and notice the gaps, the holes where things used to be? Why and when do we start trading in fun and enjoyment for responsibility and toil? At what point, at what season in our life do we abandon that which made us us, which brought us so much happiness? When do we leave old friends behind? When do we realize that we've hung things up, possibly for the last time? It's usually never intentional that our actions or inactions will cover the past. But most commonly, it's a slow, gradual process of forgetfulness and moving on that leaves things behind and unattended. Well, there's a solution, an answer to this, to help us see back to that which we enjoyed. And to help us remember what we used to do and what brought us so much pleasure in life. Sometimes all it takes is a fresh set of eyes or new perspective to help us remember where we were and what we used to do. Hey buddy, what do you want to do today? No, that's not what I'm saying. I think it's going to be a great idea. And we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm just saying it's going to take me a few minutes to get ready. And what are you going to wear? No, really, there isn't that much. We haven't done this in forever. So there are a couple things. But if you help me out, it'll go by really quickly. And then we can get out of here. That sound good? It's a shock pump. We don't need a shock pump for this. Hey buddy, can I see that grease rag one more time? Uh-oh. I guess doing bike maintenance and repair work is a very, very exhausting job. So the big guy is up there taking a pre-ride nap right now. I wanted to take just a little bit and tell you where the inspiration for this film came from. We have two horses. And to properly take care of horses, you have to have their hooves kind of filed down and flattened. And basically, it's kind of like a mani-pedi, except for 1,000-pound animals. Now, the person that does that is called a farrier. He comes out with special tools, special equipment, a lot of experience in doing this. Well, I was speaking with a farrier a couple of days ago, and he was telling me that when he was younger, he loved roping. This was his passion, his dream, to be a professional roper. So I asked him how he got to where he is now. What made him go from being a roper to a farrier? And he said he never intended to switch careers. It wasn't a conscious decision where he decided one day he was going to hang up the rope forever and just work on horses' hooves. What happened was, over time, things in life kept coming up and they kept interrupting and getting in the way of what he loved to do. Roping took a lower and lower priority until finally he realized it wasn't, he wasn't doing it anymore. And even then, he still thought that someday he would get back to it and pick up that career again and do what he loved, but it never worked out and it never happened. Well, I started thinking to myself, I used to love riding bikes, road bikes, gravel bikes, mountain bikes, just anything. It was, it was what I was into. But in the last couple of years, I've hung up the helmet. I've done it maybe once in the past 16 months, and I miss it. Those were some of the best experiences and best memories I've had in my life. I want to get back into what I loved and what I'm passionate about. 
And that's when I realized that you can never really go back and make things the same as they were before. That's just not possible. There's always going to be a little bit of a difference or something's going to be just a bit off. But what you can do is to take those activities and modify them to fit your life as it is now. That way you can still get out there and pursue your passions and do those things you love without having to give them up entirely. I can still get out and I can still ride my bike if I make a few small changes. It will still be the same activity, but it may look just a little bit different. All right, big boy just woke up, so we're gonna light this fire. You ready? <laughs> we're gonna have so much fun. Pendleton has a fantastic waterfront, like riverside bike path, two and a half miles long, completely paved, perfect for a trailer bike shakedown run. That's where we're going to head. He's not old enough yet to sit in the seats that come with the trailer. So this whole thing is going to go in there. We just made it onto the bike path and so far so good. So even if we go to the end and back, only a five mile round trip. And this is the best time of the year to do this. Absolutely gorgeous out here. Weather's perfect. Really couldn't ask for much more. So far, bike path is a huge success. We're absolutely loving it out here. Right, big guy? For a couple of the road crossings, Pendleton built, built these really, really nice road underpasses. That way, you never have to stop. As all seems to be the case, whenever I go outside, and do something for the first time in a really long time, starting to rain. I just felt the first few drops. So I'm gonna turn around with the kid. We're only two miles in, but I don't want him to get wet and have a, a really bad time. So yeah, we're gonna, we're just gonna spin it around and head back. The good news is it's all downhill. The bad news is I've got a headwind. We pretty much booked it straight back. I felt a few more drops along the way, but nothing serious. So I think we're getting out of here on time. Kid's been sleeping ever since I turned around. Maybe even longer, I'm not sure, but at least I think that means he had a good time. And, uh, and here's the light shining on the side of the building. Should I tell them? Is it all right? Okay. Well, we've had a few talks since we got back and we both agree that the trailer has a lot of potential. It's fun, it really is. We weren't out there long enough. I mean, uh, definitely the ride would have been better had we just gotten a few more miles in. But the one thing I have learned when you're trying to get back into something, or even when you're starting something for the first time, don't give up. If something doesn't go right, uh, it may take several attempts. Just keep trying, keep getting out there. I had a good time and I am so happy that I didn't just give up and never go bike riding again. What I'd love to do is take the bike and trailer out into the woods. We have a fantastic mountain biking area out here in Eastern Oregon. But the problem is the bike trailer has two wheels. So it's kind of like an ATV in the woods. Every time you hit a, a bump, you're gonna bump up and down as well as left and right because uh, bumps are usually uneven. So your right wheel may go up a little bit higher than your left wheel and that's gonna cause him to rock side to side quite a bit. Now, there is a, con a company from Germany called Toot Off-Road, T-O-U-T, and they do make fantastic one-wheeled mountain bike bike trailers. And that would be just the golden ticket. It'd be perfect route here. 
but because of the pandemic, they're no longer making anything. They've shut down temporarily. I've called a few of the dealers and they have no stock. So I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed as they get back in business because if I had one of those, if we could just get out into the woods and, and take these guys, that would be the ultimate family outing. I would love that. So not only would I be able to get back into cycling, but I'd be able to do something that I've never ever done before. Take a trailer on mountain bike trails. And that to me sounds like so much fun. So thanks buddy. Thanks for helping me remember how much fun it was and thanks for coming along. You make a really good co-pilot.